Today I want to show you guys a nice little number theory problem. And so we want to start off by assuming that a cubed times b to the fifth times c squared is a perfect seventh power. And then use that information to show that a times b to the fourth times c cubed is also a perfect seventh power. And really the main tool that we'll use here is the fundamental theorem of arithmetic as well as the notion of congruence mod, well, seven in this case. Okay, so let's maybe get started. So let's first write A, B, and C via their prime factorization. So we'll write A as P1 to the L1 multiplied all the way up to P sub R to the L sub R. And then we're gonna write B as P1 to the M1 all the way up to P1 to the MR or PR to the MR. And you might say, well, how do we know that A and B have the same prime factors? Well, we don't know. And in fact, what we'll do is just take whatever exponent we need to to be equal to zero so that we're using all of the prime factors of A, B, and C, but then just giving them a zero exponent as necessary in the expansion of A, B, and C. Okay, so as such, we'll write C as P1 to the N1 multiplied all the way up to PR to the NR. Okay, good. So that's our way of writing A, B, and C as expansions of all of these kind of same prime powers. Okay, so next up we'll look at this object right here, which is A cubed times B to the fifth times C squared. And let's notice that we can rewrite that in the same prime powers or with the same primes. And so we'll have P1, but now that'll be to the power 3L1 plus 5M1 plus C plus 2N1. And we see that because we get a power of 3 from A, a power of 5 from B, and a power of 2 from C. And then this is going to multiply all the way up to the last one, which is going to be PR and then 3LR plus 5MR plus 2NR. Okay, good. And we have given that this is a perfect seventh power. Well, whatever perfect seventh power it is, it must have the same prime factors. So we're using that fact quite a bit. And so this is gonna be P1 to the seven times X1 all the way up to PR to the seven times XR. So it's gotta be a seventh power. So what seventh power is it? Well, I think it's pretty clear that it's P1 to the X1 all the way up to PR to the XR to the seven. Okay, great. But now using the fundamental theorem of arithmetic again, we can extract all of the exponents from each power of each prime. Since these are unique primes, I didn't really say that here, but that's kind of like in the undercurrent of this whole solution. So that tells us that we have 3L1 plus 5M1 plus 2N1 is equal to 7X1 all the way down to the last one, which is 3LR plus 5MR plus 2NR is equal to 7XR. Okay. But now we're gonna reduce this modulo seven. So if this is a multiple of seven, then that means we know it's congruent to zero mod seven. So let's say this is congruent to zero modulo seven. And then likewise, this guy is also congruent to zero mod seven. And let's notice that our goal can be rewritten as a similar congruence. And let's maybe write this goal right now. So we want to show that L, I'll just write LI plus four MI plus three NI is congruent to zero mod seven for all I between one and R. Why would we need that? Well, following the same kind of path all the way back up here, that'll give us that A times B to the fourth times C cubed is 
a perfect seventh power. Okay, so how can we go from here to here? Well, actually, you know, this problem was constructed so that this works out quite nicely. All we have to do is multiply both sides of all of these congruences by a certain number. What number will that be? Well, let's see. In order to get three into the number one, if we're working mod seven, we have to multiply by five. So let's see what happens if we multiply this whole thing by five. So five times three is 15, but 15 is one. So that gives us the correct coefficient down here. Five times five is 25. But if we reduce that mod seven, we get four because it's four more than 21. And finally, five times two is 10, but that's three more than seven. So that's three mod seven. So that means that if we know this is true, then by multiplying all of these congruences by five, that implies that this is true. Okay, and then I kind of like waved our hands at finishing it all off, but let's do that on the next board. So far, we've just determined that for all i between one and r, that li plus 4mi plus 3ni is congruent to zero mod seven, where the l's, m's, and n's are the exponents here and the prime factorizations of a, b, and c. Now we're gonna take this congruence to zero mod seven and recall that that means that each of these is a multiple of seven. So I'll say that this is seven times yi, well, for some number yi. Okay, but that means that we can take the number a times b to the fourth times c cubed and rewrite it as this product, p1 to the L1 plus 4M1 plus 3N1, all the way up to PR, to the same thing with just the ones replaced with Rs. So we've got LR plus 4MR plus 3NR. Good. But now, by what we showed on the last board, just tweaked a little bit, we can replace each of these with Ys. So we have P1 to the 7Y1, all the way up to PR to the 7YR. And then really to finish this off, we can write this as P1 to the Y1 up to PR to the YR, all to the seventh power. So in the end, we've written our number a, b to the fourth, c cubed as a perfect seventh power, which was exactly our goal. And that's a good place to stop. Mm -hmm.